Hey guys, and welcome back to another uh, tutorial for the Ruby programming series. Uh, this is going to be tutorial number 14, and today we're going to continue working on our Final Fantasy Tactics menu, um, and then we're going to get to a couple other uh, items that uh, have been requested. So let's go ahead and get uh, jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to be tying up that menu to the other scenes that uh, are in the uh, system. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and decide what we're going to do with the other options. I think for now we're just going to leave them open since we'll have to define some custom scenes and stuff for that later. Um, but uh, I think uh, for the main part, that's just what we're going to cover. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and uh, just to note, I added one additional line here to the def update hand. The reason why was that... Uh, if the window was not visible, but the index was greater than um, negative one, then the hand stayed visible even though the window was not. So um, I just added this in order to hide it. Um, so basically it says set it to false if the window is not visible. Um, just a way to override the index stuff. So, all right. Um, let's see, where we want to start is actually back in the uh, menu area here and here we created our window with the uh, functions of items, abilities, class, status, and dismiss. Now um, the way items works in uh, Final Fantasy Tactics is, is that it's just a list of the items in which you're currently carrying. Um, but um, when you select your character you should or you do still have the ability to modify their equipment. Um, I can't recall right off of the top of my head exactly how it worked, but all I'm going to do is we're going to tie this to the uh, items menu, and we're going to rename class. We're just going to do that as equip for right now, and then this will be exit, or better yet, quit. Okay, so now we've got um, our options. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those. So I'm just going to copy them here to my clipboard. And we're going to come down here to our update input. All right, so here it says, if I'm selecting input and the command window is active, then do this. Okay, and if not the command window active, then it should do this process for selecting the, uh, the appropriate character and launching that window. So. What we're going to do here is we're going to insert a couple new lines of code. And you know what, before I do that, let me just show you one thing. If I don't have that return on there, this is what happens. Now, basically, if I don't have a return here and I get an input C and I go through my um, actions here that I'm supposed to have happen, well, it goes through all of those, but then after it gets through those, it gets further down in the code and says, oh, well, I've also got input C here, so let's do all of that as well. So um, it's very important to make sure that you have your return up here in order to make sure that uh, you're not processing code you don't mean to. Um, so let me just show you an example. But we get in here, and then when we click on the Enter, it always takes us back up to the very first item because again it's making the decision noise like it's supposed to um, and then it's going down to the lower area and then it's saying alright well process that make the command window visible and then reset the index back to zero and that's why it jumps back to zero each time so just make sure you get a return there and you'll be set okay so our command window um, should have a variable index that we can read. What we're going to do is we're going to run a case off of that. Okay, so zero being items when one, and that's going to be abilities when two, this is going to be equip when three, status, and finally when four. So what we're going to do is we're just going to launch all the appropriate scenes with each one of these. So for items, we want to call scene I, or scene equals scene item dot new, 
and I don't believe it actually launches ever with an individual character, but let's just go double check that. Um, there it is. Okay, so it takes no arguments, so that's good. It'll just open it up and be the item window. Um, and then once it finishes, it will go back to the main scene. So, let's go back down to here. And then let's say abilities. Um, that is going to be scene skill. Scene skill dot new and equip. Although that is going to require an actor, I think. So what we need to do is we need to fetch the current actor and pass that to it. So let's go double check it. All right, it wants the actor index, so not the actual actor, but just the index of the actor, and then the equip index equals zero. What is the equip index? Well, that's funny, it reads it in, but it doesn't do anything with it. Odd. Oh well, I guess. Um, Alright, so let's go back to our menu over here. And what we need to do is we need to supply it with the current index of the cursor, because the cursor index correlates directly to the actor index within the party. So we're just going to go ahead and say cursor.index. Okay, and then the next one here was scene, scene equip. And I'm going to guess this means the exact same thing. And then also here, scene status dot new. And this one here is going to be scene equals nil. By setting it to nil, the whole thing will exit out. Okay? Because if we look down here at main, it says while seen not equal to nil. So as soon as you set it to nil, then it'll automatically quit out the game. So let's go ahead and take a gander at that. You know what? Before we do that, let's make sure that we actually got those ones right. Scene equip, actor index, equip index. I don't think we need to bother with that one. And then actor index. So again, all indexes, so we shouldn't have anything to worry about there. Okay, let's go ahead and just try this real quick. Okay, items. It launches our item scene. Okay, abilities. Equip. Status. And finally, quit. There you go. So, once you've decided, you know, what options you've got, and if you've got individual scenes set up for those, like the default menu is, then it's really easy to be able to switch between them. But if you want a scene to just pop in on top of that without removing your existing one, then it's a little bit more complex. Uh, we'll get into that later, but um, I think that's going to cover it, at least for uh, what we're going to cover on the menu tonight. Um, the next part we were actually going to cover uh, was going to be a request. I've got uh, two I was hoping to fill tonight, um, but the first one had to do with when they attack, when you select the option to attack, then it's going to open a window with the uh, equipment that that character can use, and then you can choose a weapon, and once you choose a weapon, then you'll be able to deliver an attack with that particular weapon. So that's kind of the idea of what we're going to do. So um, let's just go ahead and jump into that. Um, let me go ahead and get this moved out of the way here. I think one of these started a battle. So let me just double check. I, here we are. That one starts a battle. OK, so this one here, he's given us a club. But let's go ahead and give us a couple extra weapons here as well. Got a long sword and a long spear. We'll go ahead and pull him down here so for easier testing. And then we'll make sure that our paladin here can use all of those, which he can. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make some changes to the battle system. Um, but before we get into that, well, we need to stop and think about 
what it is we want to do. Okay, so we need to have a window that is displayed to display the uh, weapons available to that particular actor when he selects to choose to attack. So we need to create a window and then we need to insert that window into uh, the attack method and it should just simply insert a equip function prior to performing the attack. Um, otherwise everything else is going to continue as normal. So, um, so we just need to make one window. So let's go put that window together. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new script section here. We're going to call equip weapon on attack. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off here with class. Oh, and uh, one thing I also forgot to mention is, is that that window, obviously, because it's going to contain a list of items in which we can select, we need to be able to make it a window selectable so that we can choose which one of those weapons we want. So uh, important when thinking about which class you're actually going to inherit from when designing your window. So um, let's go ahead and say window attack equip or equip attack and then that is going to be less than window selectable. Okay, so our initialize method dictates that we need, I believe, uh, x, y width and height. So let's just go double check that x, y width, height, as well as spacing if we choose. Um, it sets a column max, but it doesn't allow us to pass in the arguments. We have to set that afterwards. So let's give it an x, y width, height, and let's do that down here. So let's give it a 0 and a 0. Yeah, that's right. The reason I'm giving it two zeros, um, in other words, upper left hand corner, is because we're going to assign this as part of the viewport, the information viewport, which is the little part down on the bottom of the screen. So let me just go ahead and show that to you here real quick so you can make sure that we've got a clear understanding of this. And it doesn't like it because I put the wrong side bracket. Since we're not calling it, it shouldn't be a problem. Def initialize. What in the world am I doing wrong there? I don't see anything wrong. Oh, because you can't just buy. Okay, my bad. Because you can't just pass it a variable. I'm sorry, you can't just pass it a value. It has to be uh, defined as a variable. So we're going to go ahead and start up our battle here. Okay, so this little panel down here along the bottom of the screen, this is your information viewport. So 0, 0 would be right here in the corner of the party selection. So if we say fight, then it jumps over our battle status is here, and then we've got this. So we can do this one of two ways. When we select attack, that it should pop up a window above here um, in order to choose your weapon first and then go to the target selection or vice versa that it should just stay down here and do a target selection I'm sorry, a uh, equipment selection and then stay here and do the target selection. So we've got a couple of options available to us but we'll explore those as we hit them. Um, I'm thinking we're just going to actually use it exactly as it's shown here um, that we actually do it inside of that window. So let's go back up here and look at scene battle and see exactly how they uh, define the information viewport, which is part of the create info viewport method. And here they define the status window, which is what we're looking for because we want to actually set it at the same X as it. So here they define it in the viewport and then they assign it as status window X equals 128. So they just take it and shove it over. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We can just initialize it at that same value if we want. So we don't even need those arguments on it if we don't want. We just have to pass that up. So we're going to say 128, in other words, the pushed over value, 0, 
And then how big is the status window? Window battle status. It is 416 by 128. So let's go back down here. So we'll put it at that same size, 416 by 128. Okay, so now that takes care of all of our super um, agreements there. So now we just need to um, go ahead and give it a method for showing as well as um, hiding it. So first off we're just going to set it to visible equals false so that it hides it because once we initialize it we don't want to actually show it in the scene until we refresh it. Okay, so when we hit refresh or when we say refresh we're going to pass it a actor index and then from that actor index we will fetch the um, the actor. So we'll say actor equals game party dot actor or dot members actor index. Okay, and that will return us our actor. Now I can't recall what it took to actually sort our window to only the equipments that they can equip. I think it's actually based on the class itself. Yep, it is based on the class, but how is it actually stored in the database? So we're going to open up the help here and double check that. Let's see, it's going to be part of the class and here we've got skill name weapon set so that's going to give us the IDs of each of the ones that we can equip so we'll ask it for the class and then we'll get the weapon set and then we'll cycle through each of the weapon sets and say if you have any of this weapon then display it in the list okay so class ID equal, or better yet let's just say Class data equals better yet weapon set equals and that's going to be data classes and then we're going to say actor dot class ID. I believe that's the method. Let's just go double check that. And yes, class ID. Okay, and then we're going to add on dot weapon set because that is the method here. Okay, so that should give us our weapon set. So now all we need to do is go through for weapon ID in weapon set. Okay, so this is just going to give us each of the IDs from within. We can go ahead and say party dot with its item number weapon ID or it might actually want the item itself so let's go double check that let's see game party item number and it wants the actual item okay so we need to fetch the item before we pass it over to that method so we're going to go to Item equals data items. Although I think that's data weapons. I think so. Yep. Okay, so data weapons weapon ID. And then we'll pass that the just call it weapons. Well, yeah, weapon. Okay, and we're going to say if it is greater than zero, then we will go ahead and add that to our list. So here we're going to say, um, let's see, what is the default setting for it? I think it's just data. Window selectable. data here, I'm not sure. 
I th well, it looks like it just uses item max, so we could technically use any variable name we want for storing that. At least in uh, the older version, it would use data. So I think I see they use commands here in the window command. But all right. So up here, we are going to say data equals, and we'll make it an array. So then we'll go ahead and say data, and then we'll push it the value of weapon. So we can equip that particular weapon. Um, if so, it's going to go through and cycle through all of those and add each weapon into there, since uh, it should never actually repeat a weapon because they're all based off of the IDs and you shouldn't be able to duplicate them. That shouldn't. I don't think we should have any problems there. So right now we've got our data set. So our data set, um, we can now go through and draw the information. So we're going to say for weapon in data, or better yet, let's do it for i in zero dot 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 data dot size. Okay, now the reason we did this is because we need to know the index of the item so that once we actually add it, we can actually determine where it should be drawn rather than just randomly drawing them. So we're going to say weapon equals data and then give it the index so that it uh, can fetch that weapon. And then we're going to say draw item. And let's see, is there even a draw item method in Windows Selectable? Probably not. Let's see. There is not even a single draw method in there. So we're going to create our own. So we're just going to say draw item web i. Okay. So that's going to draw each of the uh, options there. And then before we actually get done with that, we need to set item index. I'm sorry, item max equals to data dot size minus no, just data dot size and then we're going to set column max to two. Okay, um, so I guess we can actually do that up here if we'd like. Okay, and then we're going to say self dot visible so as soon as you call the refresh, it automatically makes itself visible, so you don't have to call that separately. Okay, so we should have all of the information in there I think we need. So now we just need to have the, um, we need to have the draw methods and so on. So we'll get into that in just a moment. We are now at 23 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this for right now. We'll resume in just a second and continuing to build this. So, ta